The indie author revolution has been around for more than a decade, but we indies continue to push the boundaries of what we're capable of, from getting over initial prejudices to staring down perfectionism and author imposter syndrome, we've become a force to reckon with. Now, after years of hustle and grind, we indies are rebelling again. Gone are the days of publishing a book a month until we drop, and in its place we're sowing the seeds of a better way. A way with more ease, abundance, and flow. Get ready to learn about indie authorship from a whole new perspective. We're about to cover everything from releasing your poverty mentality to manifesting your millionaire author destiny. I'm Carissa Andrews, and this is the Author Revolution Podcast. Well, hi again, amazing indie author. I'm so glad that you're here this week. Wow, this is going to be a fun week, a fun discussion to have, because it's one that I think comes up an awful lot when it comes to money mentality, when it comes to holding back our own success, and really, honestly, not allowing ourselves to receive the recognition, the monetary gains, the anything when it comes to the creations that we're creating, namely our books, right? So (laughs) I'm going to give you this story because it's kind of embarrassing for me to actually say it now that I'm looking back, but this is where I was at. And maybe you're that at this location in your life too. And so hopefully this will make sense. So when I first was really trying to figure out why my royalties weren't coming in the way I thought they should. I knew my books were good. I knew there were readers out there who would love to read the books, but I still wasn't earning what I thought I should. I'm a smart person, right? I've got that whole natural genius uh, imposter on my side, which can be a problem at times, but I knew I could figure things out and yet things still weren't clicking. And so I started looking into money mentality as a money mindset a little bit deeper, more than I had ever done in the past. And obviously, I you know stumbled upon people like Denise Stuffel Thomas, um, Amanda Francis, and I remember there was this moment in time when I first stumbled on them in like 2018, where I was like, well, of course they're earning money. They're showing other people or telling other people how to earn money, like duh. But yet there was a part of me that felt like they're telling this stuff not because they have the secret, not because they understand it, but because they know that money sells. And this idea of money and knowing the secret to money sells. And I remember, especially this Virgo analytical mind, me being entirely too skeptical. I was like, mm-hmm, sure you did. Okay, sure you understand this in a deeper level. Okay, sure. And I kind of a little bit set it aside and really didn't dig into it. Like Amanda Francis was probably the first one that came into my sphere. And it was originally because my friend Stephen recommended, not really recommended, he was more like making fun of her. <laughs> and I was like, curious then, like, what, who is this woman? And <laughs> come to find out that she's like my favorite guru of all time, but I digress. He wanted me to take a look at it because he's like, look, when you're doing your rapid release roadmap course and you put it out into the world, you want to establish yourself as something, right? You want to be known for something. And so rapid release, I was looking at like rapid release queen, I was trying to brand myself so that people knew that I was the person to talk to when it comes to the sustainable rapid release mentality, right? But the more I was working on it, the more that obviously didn't feel like fully me, like fully myself. Yes, I still want people to publish their books sustainably. Yes, I still want them to do what they love. Yes, I still want to show them that they don't have to kill themselves to create their books. That's still all a part of who I am. But there was always this deeper part of me, this part that felt magical, that felt called to more than just this, more than just this reality, more than just this tangible material place. And I didn't know how to incorporate that into this world. So when Amanda Francis came into my viewpoint, I was definitely curious, but I was like, "Mm, okay, but but you're making money telling people that you know how to make money. (laughs) And there was this twinge of jealousy or judgment that I had in that moment where I felt like, who is she? Who is this person? And it's so funny because if you ever dig into any of her lessons or any of her like live castings that she's done over the years, she's like, if you're not asking yourself who the fuck this bitch is, and yes, this is her language, not mine, then you obviously are triggered enough. You obviously like this isn't resonating with you enough because there should be a visceral reaction to 
something that you want, but you don't have. Because when that happens, when you have that huge judgmental thing that flares up, it's actually you wishing you could do that thing. Now hear me when I say that. You wishing you could do or have what they have. So when I launched this Millionaire Author Manifestation course, I had people who were really kind of upset that I was trying to charge for the replay for the Abundant Author Activation, which kind of kicked everything off. And like I was a, like it was a money grab. And the thing is, people always interact better. They are always more engaged in a process when there is skin in the game. And money is just energy, right? It's just a form of exchange going back and forth between two people, three people, whatever. Money is just money. It isn't moral. It doesn't have a compass that tells you whether or not this person is deserving of it. Money is just a means of paying off things that we have to to pay off in our life right now. Like you can't live your life without having money come in, right? You can't pay your bills or your internet or your electricity or bring your kids to the mall or go to a movie or anything. You can't do anything without the exchange of money. And so many of us get into this habit where we believe that money is bad. It's the root of all evil. Like only rich people get money and then they're just like hoarding it and jerks about it, right? And so we're judging these people, but it's really coming from a place of lack because that's something we want. It's a desire that we haven't allowed ourselves to fully embrace yet. Now, our desires are always, always guidance from the universe, letting us know what we should be ready to receive. So if you notice yourself being judgmental about oh my gosh, I can't believe that author charged that much on Patreon. Or, oh my gosh, I can't believe they put their books up for that amount. Or if you notice someone who's teaching others how to do this thing and you're judgmental about how much they're charging or what they're doing, it is time to take a closer look at what you want. It has nothing to do with Amanda Francis. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with a desire that you haven't yet admitted to yourself you want. Now, interestingly enough, when I look back at that moment, it never occurred to me that I actually wanted to teach money mindset. I wanted to teach how to do this thing. And partially because I didn't feel like I had a full grasp on what it meant. I didn't feel like I understood why I wasn't earning what I thought I could be earning. And the more I dug into it, the more I kind of let go of my expectation of what it could look like, that is when all of this stuff started to creep in. And it didn't come originally fully in just the, the money stuff. Like I was looking at reality hacking and I was looking at, you know, bringing more fun in my life because I felt like I was turning into the <laughs> over obsessed workaholic crazy mom that like just couldn't do anything other than work. And I didn't want that for my life. and I didn't want that for my kids. And in that process, in that place of trying to, I guess, chill out and live my life a little bit better, that's where like the teachers were able to come through and I wasn't judgmental about them coming in, especially when they're teaching something that's a little bit woo, right? It's a little woo out there, but I've always been a little woo. So I'm okay with that. Now, when you are finally open to hear the message that you need to hear, the teachers are going to arise, right? When the student's ready, the teacher will come. You've heard that saying. And it's so true because when you're ready to hear the message, you're going to acknowledge it and it's going to click and things are going to lock in and you're going to move more quickly. But when you're denying it and even denying that it's a desire within you, that's my friend where the whole thing falls apart. That's where you're not allowing in more abundance. You're not allowing in more flow. You're not allowing in the message that this potential teacher has to give you. And it's kind of funny because all my life, I've always, whenever I've come up, so always is probably a strong term, but pretty much always. Whenever I've come up to a moment where, or a thing or a situation where I'm like, I will never do that thing. Like, I, I won't do that. Whether it be because my aunt was a, an author and I didn't want to be anything like my aunt. Or whether it was being an indie author because no one does indie ship back in 2010. Or, you know, like all the things. If there's something where I put my foot in the, the dirt and like stop moving forward and say, I'm not doing this thing, that's usually the thing I need to do. That's usually the thing I need to acknowledge and look closer at. I've gotten better at that over the years. I'm not by any means perfect. But it's, it's super interesting to me when 
like I stop and I, I really don't like something and I'm not going to move forward with it. My husband teases me all the time that I should be a country singer because I so vehemently hate country. And now don't like send me hate mail. I don't hate it, hate it. It's just for whatever reason, the resonance in it just, ugh, I, I can't do it. But there are some country songs I can vibe with if they're a little bit on the almost pop side of country. But <laughs> anyway, he teases me all the time. That when I, you know, choose to like do something else, it's going to be a country singer. And I'm like, oh, okay. But here's the thing. Here's the lesson in this weird rant. I want you to know that like when you butt up against something that you have such a visceral reaction to, I want you to stop and acknowledge and ask yourself the question like, why is this triggering me so much? What's the story I'm telling myself about this thing? Is there a different way I could look at it? Is there something else that like my subconscious is trying to tell me? Is there something in here that I want that I haven't been allowing myself to acknowledge or to look at or to receive? And money is a huge one of these because we get so we get so annoyed <laughs> with people who earn money because we assume that they're doing it wrong or they're they're jerks or they're you know self-centered or they're whatever the truth of the matter is there are plenty of good-hearted kind wonderful people who have money there are so many indie authors out there who are doing amazing things with their books and earning money there are some amazing indie authors out there who earn a shit ton of money and who are helping their own family and elevating their own lives before they can trickle it out into the world there isn't a right or wrong way in order to utilize money. There isn't a right or wrong way to live your life. Like this is our experience. This is our chance at understanding what reality gets to look like for us. And we get to play around with the stories in our heads. We get to play around with, is this really true? Does this have to be true? Is it ultimately true? Or could something feel better? Could something work for me better? And if you wanted to change your mind, the cool thing about beliefs is that it's just a thought you continue to think. So think something different, choose something different, and then start repeating it. Repeat it over and over until you believe that thought, until it becomes a core belief. But what's powerful about that is you've consciously chosen to repeat it until it's a belief. You have consciously put it in your mind, knowing that that's the direction you want your life to head. So if, for example, you want to be a millionaire author, or you want to be just a successful, prosperous author, start telling yourself that that's what you already are. Remind yourself in all sorts of different ways that you're already successful. When you get jealous about someone, smile and go, oh, there's that belief in me again that tells me I can't have that, but I can, and I'm working on it, and it's in process. And it's reminding me that that's something I want. Remember, Contrast births desires. So when we butt up against something that doesn't make us feel so good, there's probably something in there that we need to look closer at and make a better choice. Life is always about kind of balancing those scales. And we know when we are operating out of the like lack mentality, the scarcity mentality, when we're not feeling good, when we're not feeling like this is the most fun, exciting, engaging thing ever. So if you, and you don't even have to feel exciting and engaging all the time. Sometimes you can just feel hopeful. You can just feel like it's, it's coming together. Everything's working out for me. It's just hopefulness or optimism. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where all you're feeling is passion and enthusiasm and just this empowerment and freedom of everything that you want coming to you with grace and ease. So <laughs> if you were like me and you had those moments where you got introduced to the guru that would change your freaking life, but your life right now is telling you like, who does she think she is? <laughs> Just smile. Smile and know that that is your inner self, your inner being, your higher self, letting you know what you're actually wanting and you haven't spoken out loud. You haven't acknowledged enough yet. Now, when you can shift through that, when you can realize it and see it for what it is, that's when those beliefs, those negative beliefs and the limitations and resistance start to melt away. That's when you're able to move beyond it and realize that you are just as worthy as anybody else. You are just as deserving to have that much money as anybody else. You are just as deserving and worthy to have a wonderful, amazing, incredible career as anybody else. 
There is nothing in this world stopping you from having, being, or doing anything you want other than you and your mindset. And when you can start to shift your mindset and tell different stories, my friend, a whole new world literally opens up. And <laughs> and you'll know it's shifting because you're going to start feeling better. You're going to start realizing your dreams. You're going to start realizing all of the cool, fun things that you wanted, but you haven't been allowing in. And it's going to start coming faster and with more frequency. You know, they talk often about in law of attraction mindset that in order to bring the thing you want, you have to embody it first. And I remember when I first heard that, like, Going, how do you embody something when you, ha- when you don't even have it? How, does that e- how is that even a thing? But honestly, the more I've you know, studied this and the more I've learned it, the more I understand that it's not about you know, tricking yourself into believing you have it, although that helps. It's more about getting yourself into alignment with the thing you want, getting your frequency on par with what you're trying to pull in. Because remember, law of attraction brings likes to likes. And so if you want the thing, you can't bring it from a place of lack. You can't bring in more money from a place of you'll never have enough. You have to shift your mindset first. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Nothing has to happen overnight, although it can. Sometimes it's just an incremental thing that you keep working on your mindset day after day after day until you see significant shifts. And you will. I promise you, you will. It's the most amazing thing when it starts to happen. Alignment is such a key component when it comes to having, being, and doing what you want. And sometimes we're not even sure how to get into that alignment space. So one of the things that I'm actually playing around with, and I feel like I kind of, I don't know if download is the right word, but kind of, I I feel like I downloaded this message from the universe that I need to create something to help authors know when they're in alignment before they start a project, know when they're working from that place of joy versus you know, thinking that doing something is just going to help. There are so many times where I am, you know, creating a chapter or creating a project or doing something. And even though it's in my best interest to do it, even though it's pushing me forward, I haven't started the project in alignment. You know, I had a day where my kids were just annoying, or I had a a day where I just felt off for whatever reason. Maybe it was the planets or my, you know, diet was wrong or something was goofy. And when that happens, when we're not operating from that place of alignment before we begin, it's not that we won't have results, but it's we won't have the kind of results we're looking for. We need to get ourselves focused and back into alignment. So keep an eye out. I'm in the process of trying to figure out what this is going to look like. I'm thinking it's going to be like a, a mini course. So we'll see how that goes. I'm looking at maybe five big lessons and we'll go from there. But something I'm playing around with, and maybe you'll see more about it very soon. And in the meantime, I want you just to be thinking more about what is it you really want? And is there anything that has had you triggered where you've gone, ugh, that woman or ugh, that guy, he's so annoying. And then look closer at it and go, okay, what is it he's doing that's triggering you? What is it he's doing or she's doing or I'm doing that is not sitting well, right? What is the thing that's causing me to have such a visceral reaction? And is it because I want to be doing the thing that they're doing? Like for me with that Amanda Francis thing, I never thought I would be teaching money mindset. And now here I am. I I didn't even give myself permission at first, right? I didn't even give myself permission to go, that's something maybe I wanted to do. And so I want you to think about that. Is there something you're not giving yourself permission to even explore? I totally didn't. And when that light bulb switched, I remember feeling this like, Oh, that's why I'm supposed to be doing this thing. Okay, I'm with you, universe. I'm with you. And from that point forward, I've had nothing but enthusiasm for what I'm teaching, what I'm learning, what I'm exploring, what I want the indie author community to elevate into, because we are so powerful. We we human beings are so powerful because we have this ability to be conscious about the kind of life we want, about what we get to receive. And as we become even more active in consciously creating and being that deliberate creator, oh my God, the sky is the limit. We need this message in as many fields of interest, as many career interests, as many places by as many people as possible, because all it does is elevate the energy and frequency 
of this concept across the world. And we need that because we are in this place now to start earning what we desire. We're in this place now to create more abundance and freedom in our lives. Look at all around you, like jobs everywhere are struggling to have people, like pick up people and have them working for them. There are fast food restaurants, at least in my town, where they have signs everywhere. They're where they're like, please be patient, you know, for the people who actually showed up today. Like, like seriously, like what? So we, we are in this turnover phase right now where the old energies are passing away and the new ones are coming in. And we're seeing, you know, people not wanting to work in offices anymore. They want to work remotely. We have the technology to do that in most cases. And we're seeing entrepreneurship skyrocket. We're seeing authors coming into the field that are learning and growing exponentially. We have all these things that are happening and we are at the forefront of it. And as we embrace the abundance mindset, all the old dogmas of how money worked for us will fall away because we get to choose what they get to look like. We get to choose how money works for us. We've just never been told. So today, I want you to just take a look at your thoughts. Notice when you're having those jealousy moments or when you're feeling like, who does that person think they are? And just acknowledge that there's something in there that you want. And even if you can't identify what it is just yet, make a note of it. It will reveal itself to you when it's ready. You know, money blocks, people talk about them all the time. I know that there are a lot of people in this field who talk about money blocks. And while resistance in my mind is totally a thing, I don't know that money blocks is the right term for it because it feels like something that we have to overcome. Like it's a big burden that we need to release. But we human beings are like water. We are made of water, right? Things ebb and flow. And sometimes we get stopped up a little bit and we pinch ourselves off from what it is that we really want. But when the realization comes up and we realize we're jealous because we want something, (laughs) that resistance gets to fade away. It gets to go and and we can acknowledge and, and release it. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be a big deal. We can just allow ourselves the grace to know we're available to receive this thing now. Okay? So... That's what I want you to be thinking about this week. Take a look around whenever those, those thoughts crop up and just smile. Know that you're on your way. You're healing. This whole process is a, a journey of healing, of learning how to write better stories for our lives inside our heads. And I'm not just talking about our stories that we write on, you know, for books or whatever. I'm talking about the stories that we tell ourselves. But it's just so important that we start to acknowledge these things. And even if I sound like a crazy person right now to you, just know that somewhere in the back of your mind, it's registering and you're feeling the truth behind it. And when the truth is ready to really come out and be a part of your life, you won't be able to stop it. It will come through, it will rage through like a wildfire and you will be transformed as a different person. This has been a fun talk. I always love talking about money mentalities and when I get emails or social media stuff, I can look back at those comments of like, who do you think you are charging for these things when you should be doing them for free? Well, I do them for free often because here you are on the podcast, but there is this idea within them that they can't get more, that they aren't able to receive, that they're angry that, you know, someone else is being able to make money on the thing that they love when they can't. Well, you can, all of us can. And I hold no resentment to those people because I know they're just desperate to change and they don't know how, because I was there. I was so there. And I'm so glad to be beyond it. But at the same time, when you reach this level, those types of comments aren't going to mean anything to you. They're not going to rile you up. They're not going to get you, you know, agitated or make you feel like you're doing something wrong because you will understand this at a deeper level that those people just have no idea. And maybe you didn't either until those moments arise. Okay, so keep an eye out for the alignment class or mini course that I'm going to be offering here soon. It's probably going to be a live launch. So I'll be launching it maybe at a live stream extravaganza. I don't even know. I'm throwing out words, but it's going to be coming soon. And I just feel like I need to do it for whatever reason. I wasn't anticipating doing a mini course or doing anything right now, but I feel like the energies have shifted. And I don't know, maybe it's because of Saturn moving into Pisces or Pluto eventually moving into Aquarius later in the month. There's some energy shifting going on right now that it's just like, I keep getting all these insights and I'm trying to <laughs> trying to capture them all. 
and write them all down so that I can explain them and share them. But I, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. Just stay tuned. I don't even know. All right. So if you'd like to download the transcript to today's podcast episode, you can always head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 173. And if I do get the abundant author alignment, I don't even know if that's what it's going to be called. I kind of feel like it should be, but we just did the abundant author activation. So that feels weird. <laughs> Maybe that's just a story I'm telling myself in my head. Ooh, I just had an insight just now. Okay, so maybe it is. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what it is. But I'll put it in the show notes in there once I have some idea of what's happening with that. And in the meantime, I want you to just think about what I said. Enjoy the process. Accept your desires when they come up, when they arise. And don't hide them underneath, you know, shaming others or guilt or judgment. Because that's not going to help them. And it's not going to even hurt them. It's just going to hurt you. And I want you to be the one that has this amazing, abundant, prosperous author career. And you're going to get there. Okay. So go forth and start your author revolution.